At eight years old, I was one of thousands of refugees, later called the Lost Boys, who escaped war which lasts two generations. Like many others with education, I have now returned to southern Sudan to join those who stayed through the years of deprivation and bloodshed. In the history of a country waiting to be born, January 9, 2011 marks a turning point many thought would never come. Were the referendum delayed for any reasons, the people of southern Sudan would see this as a breach of promise, with real possibility of frustration leading to renewed conflict. In the end, the leaders from both sides saw the wisdom of a decision legitimately chosen by the people of the South. In 2005, the United States brokered the Comprehensive Peace Agreement with the intention of bringing an end to fighting, bringing an end to hostilities, and an intention of creating an environment that would allow further political negotiation. The agreement provided in part for the establishment of the government of Southern Sudan and it also established a referendum to decide the issue of separation, with provisions for creating a separate state in southern Sudan. As recently as August 2010, the entire South feared the worst. Tensions remained, sporadic conflict continued, and the South suspected the North of deliberate delays to cause a postponement of the referendum. All these uh, processes, political processes, as laid out in the CPA, were meant to help Sudan move towards a more democratic uh, and pluralistic society. And uh, throughout, on the technical side, the USAID supported those. And obviously, on the diplomatic side, the US government, the State Department significantly supported those processes as well. And that led towards a situation where the referendum actually could take place within four months because uh, the people, especially here in southern Sudan, but also those who were involved in the nuts and bolts of setting up the referendum in the north, had gone through these uh, before. And so it was all part of moving towards a more open uh, democratic society. And, you know, we'll continue to support the Sudanese, uh, both north and south, in their quest for that. There were a lot of delays. They caused us to have a very compressed timeline. Delays in coming up with the Secretary General, delays of getting uh, the logistics so that the Southern Sudan Referendum Commission could get stood up. But the reality is, we believe that having an on-time referendum, one that met uh, the criteria for transparency, where the process wasn't sacrificed, was worth it instead of uh, complying with the Referendum Act totally. My belief is that it worked because of the relationship that we were able to develop with key leaders and staff members, we were able to work together as a team, not only with the U.S. diplomacy and development, but together with the Sudanese counterparts. And by working together and coming up with creative solutions and coming up with innovative ways of solving problems, uh, we were able to get this thing to happen. But again, it, it happens because we had the communication, the coordination, and the spirit to get things done and to work together. Finally, the North and South agreed to appoint Professor Ibrahim Khalil, a respected senior jurist, as chairman of the Referendum Commission, and immediately faced predictable challenges. So naturally, uh, each party wanted to have things their own way. Uh, and if we succumb to, uh, if we follow the, the desires of one party, that would uh, leave us in confrontation uh, with the other party. So we had to resist. Uh, so. Uh, there, wa there was uh, a, a pressure from, uh, from outside, but we had to resist that pressure. And uh, what enabled us to, uh, to, to, uh, to get along with the task is, is not that we sub were subjected to pressure, it's that we, uh, there was a, an, an internal pressure uh, uh, to uh, impel us forward, and that's our own determination to get the task done. Time lost to late commission appointments delayed the practical work of preparing registration and polling materials and training workers. The normal 42 months process would be reduced to four months.
By mid-September, and I remember actually it was September 12th, we were really at a uh, crossroads, at a breaking point, and we were uh, running out of time with less than 120 days to January 9th to really be able to, uh, to, to develop and manage a technically credible referendum. We were uh, really caught between the legal deadlines established by the referendum law and the logistical realities of a country like Sudan. And the first challenge we faced the issue of illiteracy in a, in a region of South Sudan where the illiteracy rates are estimated at 80 to 85 uh, percent. How could we develop a system that would uh, explain to the voters uh, where to vote, how to vote, uh, to make sure that there would be a high level of um, participation. The second challenge that we, we faced was having to uh, design, uh, develop, and print outside of Sudan registration materials that would have the safeguards that would make all the parties of the process feel secure, procure these materials in about two weeks, and actually deploy them with the other registration materials throughout the country also in about two weeks, and these are processes that generally would take, uh, take months to take place. The um, logistical reality facing the South Sudan Referendum Bureau and uh, the support of the UN to actually deploy all of these materials uh, during the rainy season in a region the size of uh, Texas with about 40 kilometers maximum of uh, paved roads it presented a tremendous logistical challenge. These materials had to be trucked throughout the region. Um, there was well over 100 sites where materials had to be airlifted and I know of, of at least uh, 150 human porters were actually hired to physically carry the materials to the referendum centers uh, and sometimes taking as long as two to three days to arrive. So the will of the southern Sudanese people to, to make this referendum happen is truly amazing. So we have to organize the uh, physical setup of the office, the uh, help uh, the training of, of those uh, persons. That was one challenge at a very, very late stage uh, after August. The second challenge was to organize voter registration. We should have started by uh, July, according to the CPA. We uh, started by the 15th of November, complete this voter registration in three weeks' time. Uh, with a slight extension, and immediately the most, the, the greatest challenge was moving from voter registration to polling in less than a month. 9th January is a day for all of us to vote. We need this chance, and nothing can stop us from choosing the future of Southern Sudan. For the last 29 years, I've been waiting for CDZ. I'm very confident that this will go to suppression. You have seen the turnover all over, starting from yesterday, today, and you have been here from both ends of the whole ten states. Uh, if it goes to separation, one of the factors that I would be I would be happy to see is that there is freedom, governance, respect for human rights, and carrying other developmental activities in the country. And of course, not forgetting the conflict. It should be a system to mitigate the conflicts within Probably the best reaction to voting came from a 95-year-old woman who said, I have done my duty for my people. I voted. Now I can die in peace. So here in my station, the process has been going on well. Voters are tying up in good number. Like uh, yesterday, the beginning, the start of the day, we received the total number of 902 voters who cast their votes successfully into the ballot box. And today, it's also reaching the same number. At the moment, we have received about 800, so, and the process is still continuing. So, it's anyway very nice. The, the, the system is good because uh, after the voters have casted their votes, they go you know, yelling, producing some alarms, so, which is uh, source of uh, excitement. As of day four, total turnout had passed the 60% mark required by the Southern Sudan Referendum Act for a ballot referendum. Recording, tabulating, and reporting the final result will also happen on time. This is the data center. And I believe this is the most important office uh, and component of the Southern Sudan Referendum Bureau. All the truth will come out from this office. And we have made sure that it is accessible to the observers. 
the area you see here is meant for the observers, both international and local. The idea is to have them around as my staff begin to process the data that they receive from uh, the various parts of southern Sudan. If they, there are queries, they will be in a position to answer those queries. And the data center is staffed in such a way to make sure that during this critical period, they work 24 hours. They work in the system of ships so that whatever information they receive any time of the day, it is, it is taken care of. The referendum could meet legal deadlines and overcome logistical challenges. But to succeed, it was also critical for it to be seen as credible by observers. It was. This is the 84th troubled election that the Carter Center has observed. Uh, we were here in April and even before April for the registration of voters for that election. And we have stayed here now for about two and a half years and have participated in the registration of voters for this election and then for the election itself. We have a hundred observers in the north and south throughout the country. And we've been given a very strong, uh, I'd say moral support and financial support from USAID and a few other donor countries that have made it possible for us to so it's a partnership between us and USAID to uh, make sure this election is on uh, this referendum is uh, safe and, and free and fair. And it is very rare that things go nine o'clock, and so there may have been moments when people doubted whether it would go forward or it will have to be possible. But now it has happened, and the international community seems very. We are all very pleased with it. After years of suffering we had witnessed a credible referendum. We finally took part in a chance to fairly, transparently determine our future. I am one of nearly four million casting my vote. At eight, I became what others call a lost boy, but I never thought of myself as lost, only away. And today, I pretend to stay. Today we have raised hopes, but we have much to do to realize these hopes. We have made a proper start, but we know that only deeds will earn the trust of our people. We are proud of what we have accomplished, what some might call a miracle. Now the hard work begins.